Hey everybody, this is Nick with Frost CNC, and today we're going to make an angled wine display cabinet. So you can see I've modified the top shelf here. Uh, we've got an angled wine rack with a hardwood nosing on it, and it's fully parametric. I can change the angle of my wine display. I could even make it just a normal fixed shelf if I wanted to. And we can change the setback as well. So you can control how it looks uh, ultimately to your customers. If I go to wire view here, you can see this is fully dadoed in, front and rear blind dado. You can see my part stretches and always stays tight to the back. And the joinery uh, is angled as well and fully parametric. So let's do it. All right, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and like this video. Uh, keep following along with the content. So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to drag in a tall single door. I do have a face frame uh, library selected here. And I'm going to quick flip over to no finished ends. And we're going to go ahead and edit this uh, from scratch here to make our angled uh, wine cabinet. Uh, I'm going to press view product and we'll kind of follow along with, with what we're doing here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear the face. And I'm going to actually divide this out with center rails. And those are actually going to become the nosing uh, on the front of my uh, angled shelves. So I'm going to go ahead and do a multi-split. And we'll say we want five openings. And there we go. Now, I did this on purpose because I actually want an inch and a half uh, rail on the front of these shelves. And you can see my parameters uh, are set up to have a two inch center rail. Now, do not change it right here. Do not go through and change it to what you need. The reason is, is changing it right here overrides the parameter CR, which is the, the width of the rail. And if we use that in a formula, it's not going to work out, right? It's, this is not a parametric change. And so the right way to do this is to clear this, go to the parameters tab. We're going to go ahead and find the parameter called CR, which is the width of our center rail. Go ahead and press OK. I'm going to change that to what I want on my the front of my shelves, which is an inch and a half nosing. Now when I go back to face and I do the multi-split, they're all perfect and stays parametric. So if I use uh, this CR parameter in a formula, it will all work out. Okay, so I've got those. Now I'm gonna go to the interior and I'm gonna do a multi-split. And I wanna get the same number of, of fixed shelves. So four fixed shelves. And there they are. Oops. And I want to line these up actually on the bottom of this rail so that this nosing is the uh, lip to catch the wine bottle. I'm gonna click on each one. I'm gonna go ahead and flush bottom, the flush to the bottom of that rail. All right. Now, I wanna show you something here to watch out for. If we zoom in really close, you can see it actually doesn't line up. You can see how our fixed shelf looks to be just like a 16th or so below that rail. The reason that's happening is in a normal scenario, uh, let's go find this parameter here called fixed shelf interior scribe. You can see I normally have my shelves a 16th below when I flush them at the top, but this is actually forcing it a 16th below the bottom as well. So I wanna go ahead and, and set that to zero. And you can see right away, it now lines up uh, with the bottom, which is good. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, ne or the next thing I should say is, I'm gonna make two parameters, and one of them is gonna be the setback here. So I'm actually gonna make these shells inside uh, the frame. So I'm gonna call this, uh, we'll say FSS, or fixed shelf setback. And we'll start at, I don't know, an inch and a half back. And then the other one is FSA or fixed shelf angle. 
and we'll start with 15 degrees. And when I'm done here, you're gonna see this fixed shelf angle up by 15 degrees and ultimately become a spot for wine bottles. So let's go modify the fixed shelf. So you would have to do this for, for every shelf that you've got. I'm only gonna do it for the top one right there. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that part. And the first thing we'll do here is we're gonna change the width and we want the current width by saying part W minus our fixed shelf setback. Now you can see it did uh, reduce the width here, but we actually need to move this back to where it was here at the back of the cabinet. And we're gonna do that with part 3D position. So front to back here is not three quarter. It's actually the frame thickness, which is where that three quarter came from, plus our fixed shelf setback. And that should push it right back to the back of the cabinet. All right, now let's get the angle built in. So we're already in our fixed shelf 3D position. And really what we need here is we need to change this angle about X. This needs to be our 15 degrees but we want this to be parametric. And so we're gonna type in fixed shelf angle here. Now we need to make sure this is uh, divided by TOMM. When we put in angles, we need to make sure that we, we add this and that will work out. There you can see, there's our 15 degrees. And again, if I change that one parameter, the whole angle of this shelf and every other shelf that I do this to will, will change. Okay, so I noticed a few things that are Cool, and a few things we need to fix. You'll notice that with uh, collision detection that came along with version 10, the dado actually angles itself uh, with the part. I don't have to do any further manipulating and the dado to fix these shelves uh, follows the angle and our joint template followed the angle as well. So very cool uh, thing for Mosaic to, to have done for you already. Now, the one thing I do wanna fix, if I flip over to the left view, is as I increase the angle, I wanna make sure that my shelf still hits the back uh, of the, the opening here. And you can see I'm short. And so to make that parametric, we're gonna go back to our width here. We need to do a little trigonometry. We're gonna take this dimension and we're gonna divide that by the cosine of our fixed shelf angle. And again, since it's an angle, we got to make sure we divide by TOMM afterwards. And there we go. And that should, if you look, our part now goes right to the back. Now you'll see another thing pop up here. You can see how this dado stops short. And we're going to uh, address that in a second. But you can see now the length of this part actually is correct. And so I could run this part over the table saw. I could nip off a 15 degree angle and my shelves hit the back perfectly. And let's test the parametric nature of that. If I press OK here. I'm going to go ahead and change that angle and we should see this back point here always hit the back. You can see how my part keeps stretching. I always stay right, right against the back. Trigonometry is cool. There we go. And you can see it works even if I go to zero, right? It just recreates a, a perfect fixed shelf. Well, pretty cool, pretty cool model. Now, what I wanna do next is, I wanna actually address this dado here. So with collision detection, you can see there's kind of a boundary set. So this dado stays within the boundary of the part. It won't actually do a full dado for this part. And so uh, really I'm gonna turn on a rear blind dado and bring the dado in to the part here. And while we're doing that, I'm actually gonna do a front blind dado as well. That way uh, the dado is hidden on both sides of this shelf. So we'll go select product parameter here. We'll go to dados. And I'm gonna bring in uh, blind dado F, blind dado R. And for those of you uh, face frame builders who do full dados, you'll actually wanna make sure your blind TLM is set up as well. Grab that. So I'm gonna go with one inch here. You can see there's a one inch blind dado on the front. I'll go with one there. And you can see now we got a, a blind dado on the rear, no problems. And what blind TLM is again for you full dado folks is the diameter of your cutout tool. And the reason that that's important for blind dados is you can see now 
it cuts the tenon in a way that the round part uh, is is uh, essentially away from where this uh, the end of this joint is, and so they mate together uh, perfectly. But there we go. We've got blind dados on both sides, and that to me is a is a pretty nice parametric uh, angled uh, wine shelf. Now let's get this nosing to work out here. I'm gonna go back to perspective view. Go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do with this nosing is I'm actually gonna push it back into the opening. So let's go to the parts list and find that rail, that one right there. And we're gonna change the part 3D position front to back. And that's gonna be frame thickness plus our fixed shelf setback. There we go, so now we're inside the case. If I look at the left, you can see we're back here. And once we get the angle right on this part, we'll be able to get it pretty close to butted up to the front of the shelf here. And so it'll actually visually look exactly like what you would, would build. Uh, before we get the angle right here though, what I wanna do is fix the length of this part. So if we look down from the top, you can see our part doesn't fit inside the opening, right? We have some interior scribe here uh, on the inside. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to parameters and I'm actually going to um, make sure those scribe parameters are what I want them to be. So I'm gonna do unfinished end scribe. I'm gonna bring that in. And I actually want this to be from the interior of the case. So I'm gonna measure this from the interior instead of exterior. I'm going to put that over to interior. And when I do that, you're going to notice that nothing changes. Oh, it, it did that time. That's good. Every once in a while, if you if you flip from finish ends both to non left or right, uh, it may not do that for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to an eighth there. That's the one that doesn't change. There it is. You can see how I changed that to an eighth from the interior, and it still appears to be a half inch. I'll show you how to fix that. Go ahead and close this, press OK. You can see here, if I flip over to both and then back to none, you can see now it does it. There's my eighth. So that's a little trick I was referring to a little, a little early there. Uh, you gotta watch out for that when you're messing around flipping uh, some scribe parameters. You may need to quick refresh it by, by flipping off of it and coming. Okay, let's get back in here. All right, so I'll keep on the top view. You can see how we're essentially an eighth short now here and an eighth short here on our center rail. So I'm gonna go back to the parts tab. I'm gonna find that center rail right there. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that. And under length, I'm gonna change that to part L, which is the current length, plus the parameter UE scribe, which is that eighth inch I just set here and here. And I'm gonna do that times two. So our overall part will grow by a quarter of an inch. There it is. But you can see our position isn't quite right in the X direction. So we're gonna to go to part 3D position. I'm gonna go here to the X and I'm gonna type in cab left style minus UE scribe. That's gonna tuck it an eighth of an inch inside the left style. There it is, tight there and tight there. Okay, so while we're here, let's get the rotation right. Okay. So that is a rotation about X. And so here we've got 90. And we actually need to go farther than that by FSA, our fixed shelf angle. So we're gonna do 90 plus our fixed shelf angle. And again, because it's an angle, we have to do divided by T-O-M-M. -M. And there it is, 105. And so I guess I'll go to the left view here. There we go. Our angle's right, but our position isn't right. Now, here's the one part that's never gonna be quite perfect, and I'll explain as I'm going along. But I need to move this back into the cabinet uh, a little ways. I'm actually gonna do a little more trigonometry. And 
we're going to do that here in the Y position. We're going to add another uh, trigonometry uh, formula here. And we're going to do the sine of our fixed shelf angle, C-O-M-M, times the thickness of our fixed shelf. And we're going to do that by fixed shelf dot TH. And that, you're going to see, should move it back just a little bit, just short of a quarter of an inch. And you can see that gets us really darn close there within, that looks like uh, thousands or something. Um, and it's never going to be quite perfect because in order to make it perfect, we would actually need to change this Z position. But if I override this right here, and go back out here to the cabinet, it would no longer then respond to changes here. So if I ever needed to change this opening, let's say I wanted to drag this up, you can see how my shelf still moves perfectly in height. If I had changed that Z position, it would no longer do this. And so I want to keep this uh, functionality here on the face tab, and so I'm not going to do there we go. Have a fully parametric angled wine rack with uh, with nosing. Take a look at it. Get a good view. And now let's take a look. I can change the angle. Just fine. I can change the setback. Do whatever I need to do. And like I showed, I have my dados here. I have my uh, fastener holes. And there we go. You can make your own uh, angled, dadoed in uh, wine displays in Mosaic. All right, we'll see you at the next video.